think you've seen it all. Think scams are just pyramid schemes and phishing emails? Buckle up, truth seekers, because we're diving into the murky depths of human greed and deceit. Get ready for the top five biggest scammers in history. These masters of manipulation conned their way to empires, leaving a trail of broken trust and empty pockets in their wake. From smooth-talking swindlers to royalty with shady schemes, prepare to be shocked, astounded, and maybe even a little impressed by the sheer audacity of these legendary grifters. So light the smelling salts, grab your pitchforks, and join us as we expose the truth behind the lies in this epic expose of financial chicanery. Financial fraud is as prevalent today as it was over 100 years ago, when the Italian con artist Charles Ponzi was swindling investors out of their fortunes in one of the earliest high-profile financial scams ever recorded, FTX. The trial of 31-year-old FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried began on October 3 in Manhattan, New York, after the former head of the collapsed cryptocurrency trading platform pleaded not guilty to seven counts of fraud and conspiracy. U.S. government prosecutors have called SBF's downfall one of the biggest financial fraud cases in history. A few of his former collaborators, including business partner Gary Wong, have pleaded guilty and cooperated with investigators. Bankman Fried launched FTX in May 2019 as a trading platform for crypto investors. Bankman Fried was also the driving force behind hedge fund Alameda Research, which he co-founded with Wong, flush with $1.8 billion in private financing. Bankman Fried, along with other FTX senior executives, has been accused of using the money to buy plush beach homes in the Caribbean, invest in new ventures, and send money to local and national political causes. In late 2022, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission accused Bankman Fried of defrauding his company's investors by steering money from FTX into Alameda Research between 2019 and 2022. Both FTX and Alameda went bankrupt and Bankman Fried was arrested on fraud charges in the Bahamas. In addition to the legal battle beginning today, SBF faces a separate trial on five other charges starting in March 2024. The Ranos In March 2004, Stanford University sophomore Elizabeth Holmes dropped out of school to focus on her new startup Theranos, which set out to make blood tests more efficient, more accurate, and much faster. Five years later, Holmes linked up with a new business partner, Ramesh Sunny Balwani, who guaranteed a $10 million loan to Theranos. The company grew at lightning speed, with Theranos valued at $10 billion by 2014. By 2015, however, the company's highly touted automated compact testing device was exposed as unworkable by medical testing professionals. Soon after, federal and state regulators filed wire fraud and conspiracy charges against the company. Crushed under the weight of legal costs, the Ranos dissolved in June 2018. In November and December 2022, Holmes and Balwani were both found guilty and sentenced to 11 and 12 years in prison, respectively. Holmes and Balwani were ordered in May 2023 to pay restitution of $452 million to fraud victims, with $125 million of that amount owed to media mogul Rupert Murdoch. After the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals denied her attorney's request that she remain free during the appeal of her conviction, Holmes reported to a federal prison in Bryan, Texas, on May 30 to begin her sentence. In July, NBC News reported that Holmes' sentence has since been shortened by two years. Bernie Madoff Former New York City fund manager Bernie Madoff is long gone, having passed away in April 2021 in prison at the age of 82. But the Madoff story still resonates in 2023 with the successful Netflix documentary, The Monster of Wall Street, retelling the tale of the mastermind behind the biggest Ponzi scheme ever recorded. Madoff, a former chair of the NASDAQ, with close ties to government financial regulators, was already a Wall Street legend in the 1980s and 1990s. His company, Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities LC, was already the sixth largest market maker in S. NP 500 stocks. Yet over the course of 17 years, Madoff, assisted by company managers and back office staff, ran a massive Ponzi scheme that promised investors eye-popping returns. Instead, Madoff and his crew were inventing stock trades and fabricating brokerage accounts and pocketing the investment money. By 2008, at the height of the Great Recession, Madoff's luck ran out, and a run on deposits and the resulting investigation revealed that his firm stole over $19 billion from 40,000 investors. 
Madoff was arrested and charged with 11 counts of fraud, and he was found guilty and sentenced to 150 years in prison in June 2009. Wells Fargo This mega bank just can't seem to stay out of regulatory trouble. Wells Fargo & Co. WSC agreed on May 16, 2023, to pay $1 billion to settle a class-action lawsuit that accused it of defrauding investors about the progress it had made toward cleaning up its act after a 2016 fake account scandal. Since the May settlement, more mysterious fake account claims have surfaced, according to news reports. In 2016, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau slapped a $100 million fine on Wells Fargo, and the SEC also issued $3 billion in fines against the bank, as officials stated overworked staffers were incentivized to open approximately 2 million fake accounts under customers' names. The move was eventually blamed on senior management and boosted bank profits for the short term, yet it damaged the company's brand and alienated customers over the long term. In March 2023, the former head of Wells Fargo's retail bank and small business lending, Kerry Tolstead, the only executive to face criminal charges in the scandal, pleaded guilty to an obstruction charge. On September 15, she received three years of probation and a $100,000 fine, but no prison time. Wells Fargo also was ordered to pay $3.7 billion in December 2022 due to illegal activity involving the mismanagement of 16 million client accounts. According to the CFPB, Wells Fargo repeatedly misapplied loan payments wrongfully foreclosed on homes, and illegally repossessed vehicles, incorrectly assessed fees and interest, and charged surprise overdraft fees. Enron One of the largest corporate fraud cases of the 21st century is Enron, dubbed America's most innovative company by Fortune magazine. Every year from 1996 to 2001, formed in 1985, the former dot-com supernova made a fortune trading natural gas and other commodities and even rolled out its own digital commodity trading platform in 1999. In August 2000, Enron shares reached a high of $90, but only a year later Sharon Watkins, an Enron finance executive, warned CEO Kent Lay that a massive accounting scandal was brewing that could take down the entire company. Amid SEC inquiries into its finances, in November 2001 Enron admitted it overstated profits by nearly $600 million. Within roughly two months, the company declared bankruptcy and the Justice Department launched a criminal investigation of Enron. Before announcing the bankruptcy, Enron cut 4,000 jobs and many ex-employees saw their pension plans drained. One outcome of the Enron saga was the passage of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, which established stricter accounting rules for public companies. Picture this. Your promised quick wealth, guaranteed returns, and a shortcut to a life of financial freedom. All it takes is a small investment, a dash of trust, and maybe a sprinkle of, well, let's say creative accounting. Sounds too good to be true, right? Enter the Ponzi scheme, the siren song of scammers, the financial wolf in sheep's clothing that has devoured fortunes and shattered dreams for centuries. One of the most common methods used in Ponzi schemes is the promise of astronomical returns with minimal risk. These schemers dangle carrots that seem too juicy to resist. Double your money in weeks, retire early on passive income, unlock the secrets of Wall Street, all without breaking a sweat. They prey on our natural desire for financial security and our susceptibility to get-rich-quick schemes. But remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. There's no magic money tree. Folks, real wealth building takes time, effort, and often comes with its own set of challenges. So how do these schemes actually work? It all boils down to a twisted web of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Early investors are paid out with the money of newer victims, creating the illusion of success and attracting even more prey. It's a house of cards built on stolen dreams and empty promises. But the facade eventually crumbles. Investigations expose inconsistencies. The money dries up and the Ponzi kingpin disappears into thin air, leaving behind a trail of broken hearts and empty bank accounts. So how can you protect yourself from the siren song of the Ponzi scheme? Here are some red flags to watch out for. Guaranteed high returns with minimal risk. Pressure to invest quickly and bring in new investors. Unclear or complex investment strategies. Lack of regulation or licensing. Remember, do your research, ask questions, and never be afraid to walk away if something smells fishy. 
your financial well-being is worth more than any empty promise of easy money. So there you have it, folks. The top five biggest scammers in history laid bare for your viewing pleasure. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Keep your wits sharp, your wallets close, and always do your research. And hey, if you ever find yourself tempted to pull off the perfect heist, well, you know where to find inspiration. Just maybe leave out the part where you get caught, all right? Until next time, stay skeptical, stay curious, and above all, stay safe from the charlatans and con artists lurking in the shadows.